All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so, yeah, new episode today since football season's over. Coming up with new topics. So, today on Random Thoughts of Genius, we'll be talking about the top five, 25 Disney shows per IMDb. Yeah. I think it'd be different and pretty fun uh, since we grew up with most of these. Yeah, it's going to be interesting for sure. Some of them I haven't heard of. So. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, random shows from here on out, at least for a while until football starts back up again. Uh, do have the NFL draft coming up, but we we'll go to Disney today. So, see what we got. You want to start us off with number 25? We're going to be going from... 25 down to number one, according to IMDb. Well, um, we have Life with Derek. It was from 2000, 2005 through 2009. Um, it was a comedy tracing the consistent feud between Casey and her stepbrother Derek as the as they, I guess fight, fight for control. That's not what that says. Uh, fight for control of their household. Um, I did not actually personally watch this show. I did not know this show existed. <laughs> but what about you? Did you ever watch this show? Yeah, no, I was certainly in the same description you were on that one. I, I, I don't know the show. I mean, 2005 through 2009. So I mean, definitely would have been teenage years for us and. And we were kind of getting out of the phase of probably a lot of these types of shows, maybe, but during that time, but... Definitely looks like it's more of a live-action type show, so, I mean, yeah. about teenagers, so... Yeah. I don't know. I guess that might have been something we would have liked, but it never came on when we were watching TV, I guess, did it? Yeah, because it wasn't like it is nowadays. You can't just click and watch um, whatever you want. You had to watch what came on TV, so... Yeah. I don't remember that one for sure. I would have been... 15 through 19 when it was out, so I mean, we have been right there in that realm. Well, I graduated in 2006, so I would have been almost a high, I mean, almost out of high school. That's when you're old. Oh, shut up, you turd. Uh, you're the one that married me, so come on now. But yeah, I, I never watched this one, yeah. never even heard of it. Oh, well, we'll move on to number 24, according to IMDb, which is Jonas. 2009 through 2010, so it didn't last very long, about the Jonas Brothers. Show that follows Jonas Brothers through fun and unusual situations as they try their to live their ordinary lives. I did not watch this one. I was not a fan of the Jonas Brothers, not even in the slightest. Um, oh, what was that movie that came out in Disney? It was it had the Jonas Brothers in it. Um, about band camp, basically, is what it was. It was I don't know, it was like School of Rock band camp type thing is what it was. But um, I can't think of the name of the movie right now. But they were featured in that. And then this came out, I believe. That one time at band camp? Oh, no. <laughs> Let's not do that. We're talking about this video. <laughs> but um, they were featured in that. And I believe then that's when the show came out. But I was never a fan of the Jonas Brothers. Um, was it big on their music? I don't know. Just I know a lot of girls were. But, again, this was during a time that I was already considered an adult so and they were kind of children so that might have been weird <laughs> i mean i was a huge fan of jonas bro you can't be oh i know you were you had to be you had a massive man crush on them didn't you no never watched <laughs> this show never heard of it uh 2019 i would have been already in the military so yeah i have no idea what that one is so yeah. That's going to be a very short episode if we haven't heard about any of these shows. So. <laughs> yeah, number 23, I guess. Uh, Naturally Sadie. 2005 to 2007. A 14-year-old Sadie Hearthworth is a bright girl who is interested in nature and, an, and animal behavior. Researching beyond the limits of studying animals, she attempts to analyze humans. Yeah, I didn't watch this one either. Um... <laughs> Never even actually heard of this one, but uh, I, this would have been during the times that I would have still been watching some of these, but, um, yeah, uh, no, I did not watch it. It's like a tree-hugging show. It says forest of the trees on the sign. No idea. Never seen it. 
Yeah, um, me either. We might hit an episode or a show that we've watched before. I'm hoping we have, <laughs> we do. So, number twenty two on the list is hopefully a fan favorite of everybody's. It's Lena and Stitch from two thousand three to two thousand six. So there's a rambunctious human and alien duo that must hunt down in the Java. 625 other experimental creatures that infested Hawaii. Yeah, I loved every single episode. Um, I rate this a definite 10 out of 10. Uh, watched every single episode ever made. 10 out of 10, going off the top. Yeah. Uh, I watched everything that was ever made Lilo and Stitch wise. Even to this day, I will still, if they come out with another Lilo and Stitch as an adult, I will still go and I will watch it. I'm a big Disney fan. Um, but. Even our kids know about Lilo and Stitch, so <laughs> I I think it's it's all about family. I mean, and I think that's the biggest thing I like about it is it's big family oriented type thing. And yes, I get that it's aliens and all that, but um, you know, Ohana's everything, right? So I I just I love the whole just structure of it, and I I, I it was it was very cute, and that's why I still to this day watch whatever they bring out. So. I mean, Lisa and Sish, I mean, it, yeah, it was a good show. Uh, definitely a really, really solid show. I mean, I watched it for pretty much, I think, the entire time it's out. I mean, I only had like 90 some episodes in that three year period, so yeah. it's kind of a short lived series, unfortunately. Lots of movies, though. But yeah, they've had three different movies made off of it now. So, I mean, I mean, you can't. Yeah, I mean, what kid doesn't want their own Stitch, though? So. I mean, and it was it was a huge plus that they were um, Elvis fans because I'm a massive Elvis fan myself. So I liked when Stitch played Elvis; that was adorable. So yep, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a fun, solid overall show. I mean, I ain't gonna quite go ten out of ten, but I'll give it a nine out of ten, which gives us a total of nineteen on that one between the two of us. So, I mean, you haven't seen it. I mean, definitely worth the watch for sure. Um. Okay. Next, now, at, coming in at number twenty-one, The Emperor's New School, two thousand six to two thousand eight. Um, ninety-six. Uh, oh, ninety-six. Two thousand eight. Okay, I wasn't sure what. Nineteen ninety-eight. Nineteen ninety-six. Sorry, um, my thing is not the same. Um, continuation of the two thousands, the Emperor's New Groove, showcasing Cusco's attempt to graduate from his kingdom school, and his former advisor Yzma's evil attempts to keep him from his goal. Um, I did watch this. It's uh, good. I thought it was pretty cute. I give it a seven out of ten, but I much prefer the movie over the school show. But um. But it, it was cute. It it, it it deserved a 7 out of 10 for sure. Yeah, I mean, this is another one that I'd watch. I mean, I think I'm with you. The movie was definitely a lot better yeah. than the show. Um, But, I don't know. I mean, it, it, was a, it was an all right show. But, I mean, it wasn't, it by any means, fantastic. Uh. If I had other things on that I wanted to watch that day, I'd probably watch yeah, it. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have over picked which, it over that. With that, I mean, that's why I'm going to go with just a six out of ten on it. Gives us overall thirteen on that show, but I don't know. I just it was funny, but if there was other things on TV and Nickelodeon or something, I I'd probably choose them over Emperor's New School. Me too. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, it was cute, but yeah, I would have picked it. If I absolutely had to, but I would have overpicked many things over it a lot. So, next, uh, coming in at number 20 is Madeline, 1989 to 2001. A young oh, I girl. That might be a typo, but it could be 99 to 2001. Let me double check that, though. Okay. Yeah. That one might not be a hundred percent accurate, but continue on. I'll find it okay. real, real sick quick. 
Um, a young girl embarks on a series of misadventures causing her friends and teachers to be worrisome. Based on the children's book. I did watch this. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't watch it a lot. But, uh, like you said in the previously, I, I'm old, so I had I didn't have a lot of choices in some cartoons when I was growing up. But, um, I thought it was cute. It, I did read the book, the children's book, with um, my grandparents a lot. So, when it came out, I did enjoy it based on my growing up. It was just something that I was, I did enjoy. Uh, it was not for long, but... It was cute. I gave it a six and a half out of ten, uh, just because it was cute and it's a little kid show. So, okay. So apparently, IMDb is showing as nineteen eighty nine to two thousand one, yeah. but then there's also a nineteen ninety eight series of it too, which I think is a live action of it. Mm. But if you just Google it, it shows it from nineteen started at nineteen ninety three. Animated the animation series for two series, so the 93 to 95. So I don't know. See, Not I sure. remember it being on for longer than what this is stating it's on for because I was I was older whenever I was watching it. But my grandma liked to record stuff, she had a lot of like VHS tapes. Um, I mean, they recorded Ren and Stimpy like every single episode, so I watched all of those and. All of the Buffy. I mean, there was every single episode that you could ever imagine of a lot of shows that most people didn't get to watch because, well, we didn't have DVRs back then. So, I assume this is probably one you did not watch. Yeah, I did not watch this one. Um, I actually never heard of it until we made this list. Uh, no idea about this one. So, that was going to be a low score. You said you gave it a six? Six and a half. So, I mean, that's going to be all the score we can give that one is because I haven't watched it, so... It's going to take a hit on this just based on that. I'd never watched it. Yeah. So, I mean, Corey in the House comes at 19, though, as Corey Baxter moved to the White House in Washington, D.C., when his father, Victor, is named a new president. And, and uh, named a new personal, sorry, personal White House chef of the president. So, I actually thought this was a garbage show <laughs> um pretty much hated it anytime it came on and would immediately shut it off uh, if there was okay. nothing on nickelodeon i would just go outside because i would just rather not watch tv than watch, watch this, this horrible other show i mean i liked Corey baxter when he was in that set of raven but i mean this spinoff did not work it, it was Garbage and well, should have never been on the air. That's probably why it only based, lasted two, yeah. two seasons. Yeah, based it on the how long it was on the air. Yeah. Um, I did watch this show. Um, I didn't mind it much, but I also wanted to be a chef. So I was intrigued by being the White House chef. So I gave it a chance. It, like you said, it it was a major crapshoot. Um, it was he, he did. I preferred Corey and that's a Raven for sure. Um, well, it's because in that's a Raven. Corey was his I mean, naughty he, little he brother. Cared about amazing. Well, he cared about money and he actually stood up for his friends. But in this one, he was he like was a spoiled little crybaby with retarded lines that they gave him, like they gave him the dumbest lines ever. So it was like it was just not a good show. Well, and yeah, he, you could tell that he went from being the snotty little brother to being a spoiled rich kid, and that's not the way they should have played that. I think it would have went a lot better if they would have played it the same, gave him the same type of role in Corey in the House as they did in That So Raven, and so had him be the snotty little brother, but be the snotty little brother in the White House, and, you know, every once in a while have Raven, you know, I get Raven was older and she was probably getting out of tv but i don't know i think they could have played it a lot better than what they did especially based on what they were trying to do but man they did uh, not play it right if i remember right i think raven had already pretty much stopped with disney but she wanted the spinoff i think she was the one that wanted the spinoff but no oh, i don't remember yeah, i think raven simone wanted the spinoff and she had a part in part in it but they definitely did not do it justice yeah 
So but I'm that, only giving Corey in the house a 3 out of 10. Ooh, see, I gave it a 4 out of 10. So, I mean, I gave it a little bit better because I did kind of enjoy it, but not 100%. So. I'll give it a 7. Yeah. Um, the next one coming in at number 18 is Brandy and Mr. Whiskers from 2004 to 2007. Um, a snobbish dog named Brandy and a dim-witted rabbit named Mr. Whiskers try to make the best things when they get stranded in the Amazon rainforest together. I do remember this. I watched it a little bit. Um, I didn't enjoy it very much. It was one of those cartoons that if you had no other choices, you kind of watched. If it was, you know, nasty outside and you couldn't go outside because that was... The only reasons we couldn't go outside really when we were kids. Um, I didn't really enjoy it, but it was just something to watch. It was kind of lame, <laughs> but. Man, it is a, not a horrible show, but it definitely was not a great show. I mean, it had pretty good artwork in it. Had tons of colors to keep kids watching. So, I mean, they did a good job on the show itself. I mean, they did do that, yeah. So, I don't know. I gave it a five and a half, so. I gave it a five. I think it was a decent decent enough show to get a mid-rank on it. So, I mean, five and a half, your five gives it a ten and a half. Hold. Okay, then. I mean, yep. Yeah. Adam Montana came in at 17 on this list in 2006, 2011. Um, there's a adventures of a teenage pop star who can keeps her identity secret, even from her closest friends, by using a disguise on stage. Never watched it till became a parent. So I mean, when it was actually out, I never had seen Hannah Montana. So I mean, overall, I mean, wasn't the worst show I guess watching as a parent, but. So, I mean, the songs were okay. It had an interesting storyline, but that's basically when I started watching it. Is whenever I became a parent. So, um, it was it was cute. The storyline was adorable. Um, that's when <laughs> Miss Montana was uh, still decent because she went through a phase where she was naked on a wrecking ball. So at least she uh, is not. Like that quite so much anymore, but uh, it was Miley Cyrus that played her. Huh? Yes, it was. It sure was. Um, now I will say it seems like most Disney stars mm -hmm. go through that weird phase afterwards, but they go through a lot. They've all put out some really scandalous stuff. So afterwards, but um, based on what I seen, I did enjoy the show. Watching it with our our oldest, um, she was obsessed. With it for a long time, she had all the dolls and would go around singing all the songs. And this, if she figures out that we mentioned her and that she's gonna be embarrassed to know that she watched Hannah Montana. Um, but uh, just like she was obsessed with Justin Bieber. But um, yeah, that's the only reason I ever watched it. I still gave it an eight out of ten because it was cute and it was wholesome, and um, there was nothing that was just ridiculously bad like there isn't a lot of stuff nowadays so it was just very cute yeah i gave it a five out of ten i mean it had good songs in it but i mean other than that like i said I, it was hard to judge this show just based on it as a kid i never watched it so okay makes sense next one coming at 16 house of mouse 2001 to 2003 Collections of short cartoons hosted by Mickey Mouse and his Disney pals at his club, House of Mouse. It was sad to say, but I never actually watched this. Um, if I did, I do not recall. Um, so, <laughs> I can't give it a score. Yep. I'm same boat. I never watched it. Never knew it was a thing, so I'm not sure if we just when it, it came on. I mean, yeah. 2001, 2003. I mean, of course, Mickey Mouse was also a lot more of our parents' age group of when Mickey Mouse be, was popular, so, I mean... And then it came, be. it became repopular again whenever our boys were little, so... I mean, it's just one of those things that's not something we ever really got to encounter because of it, maybe because of when it came on, or just because we would have been a little bit older during that era, that time frame, so... I don't, I have no idea. Yep, no idea on that Looks one. like it would have been cute, though, if it was a bunch of Mickey shorts, so... 
And it could have just been a not traditional TV show, too. If it was with it being short, mm -hmm. it could have just been almost commercial breaks. So maybe we did technically see them. But we just don't remember but because of don't that. don't remember being called House of Mouse. Maybe. So That's a good possibility. I, I'm not sure on this one. Yeah, I don't know. So we'll move on to number 15 on the list, which is The Weekenders from 2000 to 2004. So it aired for four years. The humorous friend Friday through Saturday misadventures of four best friends. Never watch it, so I have no Me idea. Me either. Um, I may have seen a an episode here or there, but I don't remember it. So um, I'm gonna say I didn't watch it. Can't judge it if I didn't if I don't remember it. I <laughs> could have been I another one that would recognize we didn't watch, this but artwork at all. So Me either. Yeah. I think we're just going to probably have to skip that one and go on to number 14. Okay, number 14 is Wizard of, Wizards of Waverly Place, 2007 to 2012. The Russo, Russo family sorry, um, may be an ordinary family with a, an average restaurant, but behind closed doors, all three children must comp compete to be the next family wizard. I loved every single one of these episodes, watched every single one of them. Even as an adult, I still rewatch them sometimes because it was so cute. I've seen every single movie that ever came out from them. Um, yeah, I'm. I was a little. I'm. A, I'm a little weird about this TV show. I, I really like it. Uh, I give it a ten. Harry Potter fan, probably. Uh, yeah, I you're like a. Harry, I was, you're a Harry Potter fan too. Don't even. No, I always wanted to be a wizard. So like, I mean, come on. I wanted to be able to give do it magic. A, a what? A ten out of ten. Love this show. Well, I'll give us a total of 16, because I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. <gasps> it's another show I never watched until becoming a parent. What is wrong with you? This show came out when I was 17. I was about to go Stop. into the military at the time. Oh. Why would I have seen this? Because it's adorable. I like, but I still, I sometimes have to force you to watch Disney movies. With me, when so. I was going into the military, I think the last thing I was thinking about was watching a Disney movie about teenage kids. Okay, I get that, but like, <laughs> logically, you could have been watching it just to, like, relax some. I don't know, it was cute. I just liked it. I don't know. Never watched it until it came apart. Um, well, it, it had an yeah, interesting storyline, but, I mean, like, it it was too late. If it would have came out earlier, I probably would have watched it more, but it, it was too late. I mean, you're talking 2007 through 2012 was literally pretty much my entirety of my military career. Yeah. Like, it, it was in, came out on Disney the entirety of the time. That Maybe that's sure. why I did start watching it, though, is because I became a parent in 2007, and so I was bored, stuck at home with a newborn, so I'm like, hey, let's just watch TV, and this is what I happen to be watching, because I was obsessed yeah. with Disney. That was definitely a harder one for me to judge on, based on the fact that, uh, I mean, it wasn't a childhood favorite of mine, so... It's hard to judge on something like, like that. Yeah, I agree. Okay, moving on to the next one. Okay. Uh, Phil and Moore. Or Phil Moore, sorry. Um, born delinquents that now fight for the good guys in that ex-middle school. Yeah, I did watch this one. Did you? I remember this one. I mean, wasn't super fan favorite of mine. I mean, it aired from 2002 to 2004. And detective show, I mean, it made for, made other kids, I guess, want to be a detective or potential hall monitors when we actually had hall monitors. I don't yeah. think they have hall monitors anymore. No, not unless they absolutely have to, I don't think, but I'm not sure. I do know that I enjoyed the show for the most part because it, and I know the show is not a Disney show, but um, I also enjoyed Invader Zim. And it gives the same vibes as, as that show based on the character looks. And I think that's probably why I liked it a lot. Um, but I, I don't know. I just, I, I did like this, this show a lot. I liked a lot of cartoons, though. So. Yeah, I don't know how well it did overall with the crowd since they only had it on for two years but i went ahead and gave it a six out of ten i mean i remember it but it doesn't have like super big meanings to me as memories yeah i gave it an eight out of ten i i did like it a lot um, I, I watched it every time i was able to um, uh, moving on to number 12 <laughs> 
would be American Dragon Jake Long, aired from 2005 to 2007. A teenage slacker is given the ability to turn into an American dragon and defend all mythical creatures uh, that secretly arise in the human world. Didn't watch this one. You did not watch American Dragon. I did not. I think I may have seen one episode, but I wasn't a this big... This was right, coming out right when I was turning 15, so I mean, I watched this one. I actually really enjoyed this movie, or this TV show. I can really see you, good. and you also liked the other weird shows that were about like chinese dragon people and stuff like that what is that anime stuff i wasn't really into anime jake was an anime i was not i don't anime. know you seem to like all that weird stuff though so but, i actually really did enjoy the show i mean who wouldn't want to be able to turn into a dragon to is that what he did fight. i didn't even yeah, he, i watched one he used episode. to turn into a dragon to fight you know like i mean so I guess maybe if I would have gave it more of a chance, I probably would have liked it. But this is both a comedy and a comedy for teenage kids being in high school and uh, action both. I mean, I bet, there was a sh- on that one. I bet there was a show that came out during the same time, like on during the same time that was that I watched preferably here instead of this one. Or I may have been at work because I worked a lot. So in 2005, you still have been school. Junior, probably. So yeah, I work. Working. I, I my dad forced me to work all the time. That's all I did. So, so yeah, I was always at work whenever I didn't have school. I started at school at work whenever I was that age. So not a lot of time for TV. Number eleven, I guess, since you didn't watch the American did Dragon, not. the famous Jet Jackson. Um, after spending years in California working as the TV action hero Silverstone, Jet Jackson decides. To move the show to his hometown, hoping to pursue a more normal life. Didn't watch this one. Apparently, he's a famous TV star living in a small town. When the camera goes off, the real adventures begin. Wait a minute. I'm, I think I did watch this one. I, I don't... It's hard to remember. I, I guess I did. I I do think I did, but it, I, it's not memorable enough to actually know the show or rate it. Um, it was from 1998 to 2001. So... I can't say for sure that I watched it, but I, I remember, for some reason, I remember <laughs> the image. Um, I probably did watch it a little bit, but I not enough to rate it. Yeah, so no I have no idea. I can't thing. rate it. No um, idea about this show. I mean, 98, I would have been, you're talking eight years old to 11 years old. This yeah, is definitely an older kid show. Lane more towards older kids. Um and to me, it looks like he's trying way too hard to be the Fresh Prince Bill. Or... Yeah. Maybe that's what I'm recalling, though, is Fresh Prince versus this show. Yeah. Who is that kid? I, I know no that idea. kid. I, I just don't know. Well, he's obviously not a kid now, but I, don't, I know that face. I just don't know who he is. Um, next. Number 10. Right <laughs> Phineas and Ferb. Um, from 2007 to 2015, Phineas and Ferb invent, scheme, and stay one step ahead of their bratty sister. Meanwhile, their pet platypus plots against evil Dr. Doofenshmirtz. Um, I did watch this. I still watch this. I know the theme song by heart. Um, <laughs> I love this show. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I just think it's a fantastic, fantastic show. I give it a 10 out of 10 because it's fantastic. Why wouldn't you? I mean, it's hilarious. Well, 10 out of 10. So, I mean, I can't rate any anything as perfect, me. though. Like, 10 There's out of 10 a squirrel in my pants. is perfect score. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And as much as I like Phidias and Ferb, I prefer Lilo and Stitch, so I have to rate it lower than Lilo and Stitch, but I gave it an eight and a half. I gave Lilo and Stitch a nine. I don't remember when I gave Lilo and Stitch, but you gave them a ten also. Yeah, well, okay, maybe I just like Disney more than you do. So I did like the show though. I mean Yeah, I guess I should have rated this one higher than Lilo and Stitch because I liked this more than I did Lilo and Stitch. But I mean, but like who can't I love Perry the Platypus? Mm-hmm. Pretty much hated Candace, though. Candace was annoying, and yeah. <laughs> Did you know her voice was the same person as um, the Kim Possible chick? Uh, the voice of the Kim Possible girl? And I believe the same voice as um, the sister on, um, oh, what is that show? 
um, I'm trying to think of what the name of it is. Even Stevens. The sister on on Even Stevens and um, Kim Possible are all this, the Kim Possible's theme song, the one that sings it. They're all the same voice. Did not know that. Yeah. Candace he, is annoying, so <laughs> who cares about Candace? I did. Okay. Well, Candace was a with... snitch, and ain't nobody likes a snitch. Oh my goodness, you're ridiculous. And that's all she did was snitch the whole time in this show and that is true ain't she... nobody likes a snitch <laughs> um but no i mean it was it cool was show uh, i don't know how like they i mean this whole show is principal building different random things which i mean i think most everybody try to just throw stupid crap together and like yeah this is a rocket yeah. and, uh, it's like, <laughs> let's throw a peanut butter sandwich in there now it's a rocket let's go <laughs> how they uh how the money to build what they built is beyond me. I like where they get this money from. No joke, right? Like, well, um, let's just uh, throw make a diner in our backyard real quick, and okay. It also makes me wonder, like, okay, they build all this stuff and have these adventures, but obviously, I'm assuming it's going off the belief of imagination that they thought they were They're going on these it. and well, never you, actually left. Do you not remember some of the episodes? It showed. Their great invention, but then it actually showed what their parents were seeing or what yeah. Candace was seeing, and it was just this makeshift garbage right. heap. And they weren't actually building anything. Right. So I mean, it is definitely a very fitting one. I also got to see the band that sung the intro to this. I was song wondering if you were going to bring that up, Bowling for Soup, right? Bowling for Soup. I actually have a guitar pick from them. So I mean, yeah, that, overall, it's just a pretty amazing. Yeah, which that's why I should, you should be rating it ten for ten. You even know the band, like that's cool. I've talked to the band members of the. Yeah, that's on, freaking so. amazing. Like, I mean, come on now. That's a, I don't know. Vinny Superbo will always have a yeah, special yeah. place in my heart. Come on, that's a great show. Yeah, I, the show is great. I mean, based on cartoons nowadays, can't it's, give oof. much. Yeah, it's in the but um, uh, yeah, good show. But that was ranked at number ten on this list, which is kind of sad. Crazy, I mean, but I mean, they put Lilo and Stitch what, like, way what is it, like, up there. I mean, they put them at 22, and we gave an overall score of 19. So, yeah. I mean, Maybe I don't know even... who made this list, but they need to check themselves. Mm -hmm. So, we'll go on to what they say is the number ninth pick. Bill of the Future, 2004 to 2006. Family from 2121 is stuck in 2004, trying desperately to fit in. So I did watch this one. So now it's filled from the, filled with the past, right? I mean, it's 2023. That's 2121, honey. Oh, okay. 2121. It's still, still got a little while before that. But um, <laughs> I did watch this one. It was cute. Um, I would say it does not deserve number nine, for sure. But... Um, it, it was a good show. I gave it a... I'm changing my score because I gave it a 6, but I think it more deserves a 4. Because it was good, but it does not deserve number 9 for sure. Especially based on Lilo and Fitch. And, I mean, there's just a lot of great shows that were out there. and I, I think it, it was cute. And the <laughs> fact that it, they were basically aliens in a new era. And it's like... It, well, an old era, obviously. But, um... Had all this high tech technology and everybody freaked out, was freaked out by it. But I don't, I don't know. I I, I kind of remember this show, but yeah. I can't really think of anything super great about it. I mean, if I can't think of anything super great about a yeah. show that we watched for our kid you know, as a child, you know, you can't rate it highest. I mean, I'm gonna give it a four too, which yeah. gives it a total of eight. Yeah. I mean, it. Which is less than uh, what its number is on the thing. Yeah. Pretty sad. Um, yeah, I, I can't say a whole lot about this one. Mm -mm. Apparently, it started on June 18th, though. Apparently. So, I mean... I remember making a big deal out of normal it. Normal covers. <laughs> they pulled, so. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on to number eight, then. Lloyd in Space, 2001 to 2004. Um, a Disney show centered around Lloyd, an alien, living in space and going through ordinary life with family and friends as a 12-year-old. It was created by Paul and Joe, whoever Paul and Joe are. 
I don't, I have no clue. Um, I did watch this one. I did not enjoy this one. I gave it a four, but, um, I don't, like, I don't remember much about it because of, so that's why I gave it a four because I don't remember a lot about it. Um, I remember not watching many episodes. I think I watched maybe seven episodes. Like, I watched very few. Um, I don't know. Did you watch this one? Another one I remember. Probably remember more than Phil of the Future. <laughs> um, can't say a whole lot. I watched it quite a bit because it was on. Yeah. Uh, I gave it a 5 out of 10. I mean, it, I remember it being funny, but nothing super significant yeah. stands out on this show for me. So okay. I gave it a 5. We should give it an overall 9. So, I mean, hey, we matched the scores for ranking, I guess. We ranked it a little bit higher than Phil of the Future. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Next one. Kevin Possible. 2002 to 2007. You beat me if you want to retreat. That's I'm pretty remember. sure that's copyrighted. Um, <laughs> yeah, well. There's a high school cheerleader that and her clumsy best friend balance their duties as global crime fighters with a typical challenges. Adolescent. Yeah, well, okay. So I did watch this one. I enjoyed it for the, for the most part. I mean, it was a good cartoon. Um, who doesn't want to be a crime fighter? Like, come on. Uh, I gave it an 8.5. I, I liked it a lot. I'm, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. I thought it was cute. No, nah, I mean... And I, knobby cheerleaders <clears throat> always, you know what I mean? Because they're always there. I actually like Kim Possible, too. Um, I gave it a 7 out of 10. So, we'll give it a total of a 16 on that one, which is pretty high. Um, and how did she not end up with Ron? Come on. Uh, yeah, that's weird but you're supposed to end up with the dopey best friend like he now his naked mole rat that thing can go in the trash because that was disgusting but you leave the naked mole rat. it was disgusting but she should have ended up with the clumsy but best friend like i don't know he's like this do dopey obviously completely smitten with her best friend and it's like you never make that a thing on there i think this is a lot i mean they didn't really have her super she intently was, dating anybody. She was never dating anybody, but so. he's always swooning over somebody. Yeah, and so. It's like, you never swoon over Ron? Come on, he's falling head over heels for uh, you. He got friend zone, man. He was a, the dork sidekick that got friend zone. Yeah, well, sometimes that dork sidekick, you know, that got friend zone is the one that you should be looking at. That would be coming out Kim Possible 2 and next year. Yep, taking our, taking our lead on it. Come on, have them have babies and all that kind of stuff. That's not actually really happening. Nobody quit me on that. Yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not happening. <laughs> go on to number six. <laughs> okay. Number six, Recess. From 1997 to 2001, comic tells of a group of friends, four boys and two girls during breaks in primary school as they grow up, relate to each other, and have brushes with authority. I did watch this one. I loved this watch show. Watch it too, but... As it says in the thing, it's primary school. It makes you think that it's definitely supposed to be a European show based in Europe, I guess, because most people in the U.S. don't call it primary school. Not usually, no. It's usually because middle school. What well, middle school, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's strange. I don't know. I don't know where... I'm... Never really got the vibe that it was not based in the U.S., but I guess maybe it was. Yeah, I never even looked into it, but... um. It was a good TV show. I enjoyed it a lot. I, every time it was on, that's one show that I made sure I got to watch. Uh, I will still, if I am able to get, like, these are, going through this list, I have looked into um, seeing if it's on Disney Plus. Just because. I'd imagine a lot of these. It's a show that I really enjoy. Um, and it's awful cute. So I've thought about looking into a lot of these to see if they're you on there. can make there. the kids watch them. Yes, I can make the daycare kids watch them and make our kids watch them. I won't make the bigger kids watch them, but I can put it on TV and let them enjoy it if if we have free time. Because um, back in the day, a lot of our TV shows actually had morals that were in there and pushed in there and, you know, little stories that this is why we don't do this. Nowadays, it's just like a bunch of cartoons are like talking about touching each other's butts and stuff. And it's like, or passing gas on each other's heads and stuff. It's, can, can, can we not do that? <laughs> It's not, there was no moral to any of those cartoons nowadays. 
back then there was. And that's why I like like I, I like a lot of the shows from back then. Um, I gave this a 10 out of 10. I know you keep giving me a hard time because I'm giving show 10 out of 10s. But I gave this one a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. I, mean, <laughs> I, I really like this show. Um, You're just a cynic. Can't say it's better than Lilo and Stitch. Or can't say that it's better than Phidias and Ferb. I'm not comparing um, them to each other, though. I'm saying they're just as good as. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I gave it a thought eight. Okay. I really like the show. I um, had a really cool adventures that you could actually do with your actual friends. So, I mean. It wasn't completely just makeshift like you could actually do right. some of stuff which is cool i am definitely pretty standard group of friends that yeah. they made yeah you had the couple nerdy kids the all overweight kid i, I mean, don't think that probably happens as much anymore but no because everybody sticks to their clicks nowadays even when we were in school they more stuck to clicks than what they did back and even than what this show made it out to be <clears throat> I mean, because everybody had a certain area that they were allowed to be in when when I was in school. And... But no, it was definitely a funny show that when it was on, I, I tried to watch it. So I did too. So what'd you give it? What'd you rate it? Uh, eight. 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 So okay. I give it eighteen. Oh. Eighteen. Okay. All right. Moving on to number five. Proud family. Follow. Follow the adventures and misadventures of Penny Proud as she does her best to navigate through the early years of Teendom. I loved this show. Um, it actually had a lot of... Oh, well, it was from... Did I say how what years it was? I don't remember. 2001 to 2005. Sorry. Um, I did watch the show a lot because of the fact that it had a lot of things that most shows didn't talk about. Um, so... Most, you know, stigmas that people would talk about, that would, they wouldn't talk about, it would talk about um, having a child with autism or having a child with any disability. It actually hit on a lot of those things, and to me, that's pretty awesome. It also mentioned um, Grandma having... Um, sugar Mama. Yeah, Sugar Mama. <laughs> it ended up having, later on throughout the years, it ended up talking about how she had, I think, a early stages of dementia or something like that. Um, but it would hit on certain topics that most shows would not. And I found that pretty amazing. And uh, even as a young child, like a younger child, I mean, I don't, obviously I was not that young, um, but younger child, um, I just thought it was pretty cool. And I still enjoy it today. I, I can find it every once in a while on, on different channels and stuff like you that. You still can find this on channels today? You have to be... Well, I found, like, YouTube videos of it and stuff. I was going to say... No, not actual channel I can channels. pretty much guarantee that this show would completely bomb in today's era. Now it would because they because they don't... Because they now ridiculous. Karen's out there would be saying that this is a racist show. Mm -hmm. It's very stereotypical. And... Yeah, in one of the episodes, um, the Proud family finds out that they're a set of twins. One of them is autistic and one is not. And Mr. Proud gets all mad, and he's, like, throwing a hissy fit, and you say something wrong with my boy? And, I mean, like, he gets all mad, and, I mean, it's very, very bad. And and the counselor lady sits him down, and is like, no, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with your son. I'm just saying that he's going to need special attention. He may need a little more attention than she does, you know, t that type of thing. And people would <clears throat> be more negative about certain things nowadays yeah. than what they normally would have been back then. Well, like I said, but... And then just how he acts more stern and more, you know, I, I don't know. There, there's a lot back, of things that they would Back in 2001 to 2005, they definitely could get away with this before a uh, certain president came in and ruined a whole bunch of things. But they also had a lot of slang in this. A lot show of too. slang. Yeah, I mean, they so, used a lot it, of. It was a really good show, but I mean, it would never last today. No. You, you would never be able to get away with this on, especially Disney Channel. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, but. Well, they, they've become weird on Disney, in my opinion. Um, I, I don't know. It, it just... Even on Disney nowadays, like, the shows aren't... They're just not as good anymore. Like, the shows are all... 
and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being like you know politically correct and all oh, yeah. that kind of stuff. But yes, I know you are. But I'm. I don't think there. I think there's a, a a certain point that you have to be like, okay, we're going too far on the politically correct crap. That's right, like, Karen. You can go ahead and comment on the video. It still boosts the odds. So like, <laughs> some, just like it. <laughs> sometimes we need to be like, okay, so it's okay to have a cartoon that is saying this thing or that thing, and also having an opposing cartoon character that say, well, this is why we should look at it this way too. And there, we don't have to have it saying just one thing. Um, just like I don't agree with... A lot of the cartoons are now pushing... Well, on this one, too, I mean, like... I, I say I would never stand No, but it's a cute cartoon. I I scored it pretty high as well. What? I don't know. What did you score it as? A 10. So, I mean, it's going to also get 18. Between us, because I gave it an 8. I actually really didn't like this show, but yeah. it would just never you don't like stand for today. Yeah, it would. Standards, like... No, it would be... Taking Back then, people didn't community. look at colors as much, I don't think. They didn't look they at really this family didn't. was black or this family was black. And, I mean, like I said, that got ruined. And I get that we're a white family and blah, blah, blah. But, like, in all reality, like, we've seen it. We look at it. Like, it, you people see color more today than they did back then. For sure, like back back in the, when this cartoon was aired, they seen color more today now. Like our Asian cartoons are getting taken off the air like crazy because they're being aired wrong or something's not right or you know, I mean all of our cartoons that are of color, you know that they wanted on the air, are getting taken off the air because oh we're doing something wrong, and it's like this is ridiculous. Like can we just let things happen? Um, I, I know we're pushing a lot for other things. Like, I know that there's been a lot of cartoons that are sharing, um, like, you know, same-sex marriages and things like that, which, go for it, whatever. But I don't want you to also say that we can't, that we have to have an all-black cartoon and not portray them a certain way if that's not how, I don't know, I don't know how to word it without getting, like, completely slaughtered because somebody's going to say that I'm racist and because I word it weird. And, but the truth is, it's like, you can't say anything without being racist nowadays. You can't say anything without being anything nowadays. Like, I don't know. It's kind of ridiculous, but that was one of my favorite cartoons. And then it went off the air and I think they could have done a lot with it. Yeah, it was definitely a very solid Cartoon, I, I enjoyed it, but I like Shoggy Mom. I, I thought she was fantastic. And that dang dog that always trying to <laughs> attack Mister Proud was great. Yeah. Penny kind of reminded me of London, though, just because she's so feisty. I don't know, <laughs> kind of great, feisty young girl, and our daughter happens to be feisty too. Yeah. It's cute. Well, nowadays, I mean, obviously, I didn't have a kid back then, but okay. That put up, put our score at what for them? Eighteen, you said. Eighteen on that one. All right, moving on to the next one. Oh, I'm gonna get this one. Last one. Okay, number four, Lizzie McGuire, the daily adventures of an adolescent girl whose real thoughts and emotions are expressed by her sarcastic animated alter ego. I did watch this one. I liked it. Um, I even watched the ones, the movies, and all that good stuff. I gave it a seven out of ten. I will say I'm disappointed that she. I I think she ended up giving Gordo a chance in the long run, but it was like a very short lived chance. Cause she was always obsessed with like his name was Evan, um, the high school high school jock guy that with the long hair. Um, I liked it. It was cute. But still not one of my favorites, but it was cute. Did you watch this one? This McGuire, I, I liked this show. I mean, it wasn't a super big fan of it when I was growing up, but definitely one that I watched. Who is this? Hillary Duff, I think. Yes, Hillary Duff. Um, I gave it a six. Okay. 
Uh, plus, I wasn't a super big fan of it, but it was a show I watched a lot. I mean, I mean, she's a pretty more, girl, and you were a teenage yeah, boy. So. I, mean, I was eleven to fourteen when it aired, so yeah. But I mean, they also had a lot of adventures in it. I do prefer the alter ego. The cartoon was cute. Basis of it more when I was a kid, but yeah. So you gave it a what? A seven. But I think I'm gonna change it actually to six point five because that's what I was originally gonna give it, and I'm like, maybe I'm being too harsh. But no, I'm gonna give it a six point five. Yeah. I gave it a six, but like I say it wasn't a favorite show of mine, but. Definitely one I, I watched. So I mean, I always liked the nerdy best friend with the black curly hair, Gordo. I always liked him. I thought he was a cute kid, and that she should have ended up with him in the long run because he was. I mean, I'm the, again, the friend zoned, um, because that tends to happen. You know, the he he was obviously in love with her and got friend zoned because of. I think I think the honky dude she was in love with was Evan, but I can't remember for sure. Yeah, I don't. But, I don't remember a whole lot of the characters from it, which is why you gave it my score is lower. I mean, because yeah. it's one of those ones, like, I know I watched it, but, I mean, how much did I watch it if I don't remember everything about it. it? So, I mean, I know I watched it quite often. I just, nothing super big stands out to me on it. So, it's just hard to give it a higher score than that. Yeah, I get that. I, I probably watched pretty much every episode that I could, to be honest. I mean, I, I think I did like the show a lot. It's just one of those things that's like, eh, if there was another show on, I'd watch it. So, okay, moving on to number three, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, from 2005, I would assume, to 2008. Comedy about identical twins living at the Tipton Hotel with their single mother who is a lounge singer at the hotel. I did watch this one. Um, I quite enjoyed when they lived at the hotel. Um, because they did do a spinoff that I did not enjoy. Um, but I thought this was a great show. Uh, it was quite funny. There was a lot of antics that went on. And the twins were adorable. Um... I don't remember their name, so they, I remember this had Tipton in it. I mean, you had um, London, London and Tipton, yeah. uh, I don't remember the other one. I don't remember the blonde one's name. Um, I mean, London Tipton was a girl, but the two boys, I don't remember who they were. Zach and Cody, but uh, I don't know yeah, their actual I names. I don't know their actual yeah, names. Like yeah, Tipton yeah. played as herself. I don't remember the actual boys' names, um, but. Uh, I uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was good, but then they moved on to the Sweet Life on Deck, I believe, and that was garbage. Um, Completely horrible. That ruined the series. They could have done a lot better. Um, so that actually ba kind of narrated my score on them. I gave it a five point five because of that. It, I mean, it really, really. They would have got a seven point five if. They wouldn't have done the Sweet Life on Deck, but then I based it on my, my score on, they also did a spinoff, and yep, the 5.5 based on, they did a spinoff. That's that funny, because I also give it a 5.5, which gave it a total score of 11, which is funny. pretty low, but I used to watch the show all the time, but I, I did the same thing. The spinoff ruined the series, and yeah. I think it, because I mean, once they did the spinoff on the ship, they stopped the sweet life mm -hmm. and it just was a shipwreck to say the least it was a shipwreck that it was yeah it yeah, was not punny great. too yeah you're you're awful punny um, got those dad jokes but now i think it i think the ship one brought this one down super bad <laughs> it went down with the ship for sure um yeah i mean when I watching this, I mean, living in a hotel was like most kids' dream, you know. I mean, you could live in a hotel and basically go with whatever you want to. Moving on from that one to our number two pick from IMDb would be That's a Raven. Yeah, so 2003 to. 
2007, a teenage girl periodi periodically wow, receives brief psychic visions of, her, of the near future, trying to, t to make these visions come true results in trouble and hilarious situations for the girl and her friends. I did watch this one. Um, I enjoyed it a lot. Well, most mostly I enjoyed it. I really wanted wanted to be able to do this kind of thing when I was a kid, so I really liked it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it, and but if there was something else on there, I probably would still switch to a different show. Um, but I don't know. Did you watch it? I saw very much that shoot. One of the shows I actually watched a lot. Um, really good show. Raver Simone was good at it. Like I said, we brought up Corey already in earlier. So I'm glad that this one actually scored well higher than that. Uh, I am definitely a good show. I mean, Psychic Visions. I mean, as much as I don't believe in Psychic Visions, it doesn't make for a good show, sure. Uh... I mean, that's what also, when uh, she would come up with her psychic visions, they would actually backfire on her. And... Which were hilarious when they did that, yeah. Which is probably why you enjoyed it, because you didn't believe in that kind of thing. I liked it because I wanted to believe in it. So. Yeah, well, her little backfire ones when she tries things for happening, and saw things for happening, and that they made it worse. And like, that she was did. great. I gave it a 7 out of 5 on it. Oh, you're going to hate my score. 9.5. 9.5? Yep. Like. Not quite perfect because I liked it for the most part, but sometimes I would pick a different show over it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about a total score of 17, but I mean, that's what we're giving it. So that's puts it one of the higher ones that we've ranked today. I mean, but like I say, it was, a, it was definitely a pretty good show, but. Yeah. One of the ones I watched quite a bit, which is probably why it's number two on here. I liked her friend Chelsea a lot. She was so kooky and, like, she was kind of a dick. Like, in the... <laughs> she, was, she was actually my favorite character versus Raven. Like, most people loved Raven. But, man, I loved Chelsea time because Chelsea was a complete looney tune. And she was hilarious. So, I don't know. I just liked her. I was on the air for quite a while, too. Yeah, it was. Like in four years. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, was on, it was on the air for a long time. Longer than what some of them have been. Yeah, it was. It's actually longer than our number one pick from IMDb. Yeah, which is crazy to me. You would think that they were... I mean, that's kind of crazy to me. So, number one. Number Steven one. Stevens. Yeah, even Stevens. Probably my favorite show out of everything. Um, the Stevens family live in Sacramento, California where the two younger children in the family, Ren and Lewis, who are, who have opposing personalities, often clash. So, I love this show. Probably more because um, I have hots for Lewis. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll skip over that because he was a complete dork. Um, he's not so much anymore, but he was when he was this age. Is it shallow on this one? It is, yes. I... Loved him in Holes. I mean, I, I have seen pretty much every single movie this man has ever been in. Every TV show he's ever been in. Don't remember the girl. She must have fallen off. That's, that's Candace. You, that's the ah. one you can't... That's Candace. That's the one you can't stand. Um, so. Yeah. She's the voice of the Kim Possible song. She's also the voice of Kim Possible. Yeah. She's actually pretty... Well, she's not any... She, I don't think she does much anymore, but I'm not for sure on that. Don't quote me on that because I don't know. Um, I did give this show a 10 out of 10 because, well, obviously, I... And I've seen every single episode, and I loved every single episode because I had a, a massive crush on him. But, <laughs> see, that's why I fell for you, because you're a dorky sidekick, too. So. Well, I mean... Now you, you can be my dorky sidekick. You got 10 out of 10 on it. We'll actually put it at the top of our list right now. Which makes sense being number one pick by them, too. Yeah. I, I'll give it a nine and a half. Um... It was one of my favorite shows growing up. Was it? it was super funny. It was. It was great. Uh, and I mean, he was a complete nerd. It actually lasted about the same 
I didn't sleep on a sitch, too. Yeah, I did. It's both three years. I think they about have the same amount of episodes. But, yeah, I mean... I find it funny that you think Candace is annoying because she's just as annoying in this show as she is in uh, Phineas and Ferb. Oh, I said like, she And she's a snitch in this show. It's also, I like Shia LaBeouf, so... I do, too. He's he's a great actor. Still to this day, is he a great actor, so... I, he's probably, especially at that time, was one of my favorite actors, so... Yeah. I mean, there's not much I didn't like about Mm-mm. Child of Buff when he's in, like I said, and Holes was a good show and or a good movie. Yeah, that was a fantastic movie. So, I mean, yeah. I've seen that movie probably way too many times, but. I put Even Stevens at 19 and a half on that one. Nice. Because what'd you rate it? Nine and a half. Nice. So, I mean. That was, oh, you didn't give anything a 10, then. It would you? push it. No, I did not. Now, <laughs> moving on to other shows that. I don't have anything on my list. What are you talking about? heard about it, that just other shows that are Disney shows that I guess would be honorable mentions. Okay. That, uh, I don't know why some of these shows did not make, make a cut. the IMDb list, which is insane to me because, I mean, these are shows I remember. I'm sure you remember most all of them as well. Okay. And, I mean, I gave them decent scores and they would probably score higher than a lot of these other shows that we talked about today. First one being Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Yep, I remember that show. And 2011 to 2015. Maybe it's based on how old it is? I mean, this is a newer one yeah. for sure. I uh, mean, that could be why it wasn't on the list because a lot none of these were really over. If they end up pulling uh, shows for most watched, I guess, maybe. Mm-hmm. That could be where they're coming from. Um, I watched that one. I watched that one every time I was able to. So We had DVRs when that came out, though. Yep. So, so it's definitely a newer show, but why Jesse wasn't on there is kind of crazy to me. Um, what do you think about Jesse? I would 100% rate that one... Probably an eight, because I watched every episode of that one. I loved that show. Even as an, I mean, I only watched it as an adult, so. Yeah, so I mean, it was super cute. Yeah, I gave it an eight as well. I can't can't believe it wasn't on there. I mean, Nanny living in a hotel. With the adopting kids, yeah. which was fantastic. Yeah, it was cute. I guess they were all in a hotel. It was in an it apartment. Was, it was an apartment, but... yeah. Like New York City. That used to be my dream job is just to be a nanny for some bunch of kids because I love kids. So. Yeah, so I mean, like I said, it's definitely a show I cannot believe that was not on IMBD's list. Unless, I mean, I guess it might have been because it was a newer show, but I guess we won't know that because I don't know actually who made IMDb's I list. But kind of a missed opportunity on their part for not including Jesse, in my opinion. Um, I guess for people that don't know Jesse... Can you say what years were that? 2011? Uh, Jesse was from 2011 to 2015. It was a teen, teen from Texas who moves to New York City and becomes a nanny for four rich and rambunctious kids. It's a description on it. Yeah, but you said you some of these you didn't watch until after you became a parent, so this would have been one of those would situations. would definitely been one of those. I mean, I watched it definitely as an adult. Um, but it's also one of the highest ones I gave as being an adult, too, at 8. So, I mean, both of us giving it an 8 would give it a 16 total. Yeah. So, definitely I one I can't believe contest. was not on there. Next one I can't believe that they didn't bring up on this list. Another newer one we will watch primarily as an adult, but it did come out uh, a little bit before Jesse did, was Good Luck Charlie. Oh, I've seen every one of those. Yeah. No, I can't believe that they brought it. Did not have it on the list. It's been true famous sitcom, and ever since of the world, Good Luck Charlie centered around the Duncan family as they tried to adjust to the birth of Charlotte. Duncan, the show's main protege, Teddy decides to make a video diary for Charlie that she can later use as a teenager. Yeah, I 
I think I was I watched this one so much because I was terrified that would happen to us. <laughs> I was like, oh God, what if that happens to us after our kids are that age? Because um, our kids are kind of getting about that age now. So um, yeah, that's yeah. scary. But I loved that show. It was a very cute show. Yeah, definitely a good show. It was it was funny. I mean, another one that and the parents were a lot like us. And... I rated pretty high as well. I mean, not saying to. As a parent, what are you going to give it? I'm giving that one a 7.5. 7.5? Say, so yeah, I'm actually a little bit higher. I'll give it an 8 as well, just like Jesse. Okay. So, that, I mean, I'll put 15 and a half total. So, I mean, definitely was still one of our higher shows that we had. Um, yeah, I can't believe it wasn't on the list. Yeah, and the only reason I rate it lower is because I would pick Jesse over that for sure. But it was definitely a good show. I made I always made sure to watch it. So. Yeah, another one came out way late. Yeah. Uh, came out in 2013. I'm not sure when they exactly stopped it, but it came out in 2013. I'm living Maddie. Yeah, I hated that show. So. I did not like that show even a little bit because... They had the the one sister that was so obsessed with her looks and oh, and then they had the other sister that was super nerdy and, and I don't know I if I I did watch a couple episodes because our daughter loved that show um I would rate it a four yep, that's what I get to it was a four I wasn't a fan of it it was sitcom to twin sisters who mm, not be more different Maddie and mm, is a studio and ethic. Uh, while well, Liv is a famous star who just returned from her show, shenanigans sure it's the show just try to navigate high school, and family with different opinions on each other. So I mean, they they were just a lot of times they were just super mean to each other, and one would the the one that was like fancier than the other would pick on her sister for not being classy enough and like dressy enough and not looking a certain way, and I'm like. Mm. This isn't good standards for my child to have, so I didn't like it. So. Yeah, well, yeah both four will give it eight overall. As I'm not sure when it ended, but wasn't a great show to be with. But I was one that I remember that based on some of the other ones that they had on this list, I can't believe it wasn't on there. Yeah. Uh, next one, I don't know the dates of it, but it's Austin and Allie. Oh my goodness, London was obsessed with this one. Really? After their success with music and sitcoms, Disney Channel premiered Asa and Ali as a series about relationships between two teenage musicians who join forces to produce their own music. Ross and Laura, stars of Asa and Ali, respectfully, uh, with Rayon Rodriguez and Callan Wartworth competing in the main cast as a pair of best friends. So, that's the description it gives for it. So, I did watch this because of our daughter. Um, wasn't crazy about it. She was obsessed with it. But, uh, I would so I would give it like a 3.5. Um, I was a little bit more generous. I gave it a 4. Okay. So, I mean, I'll give it a 7. I like the eight. best friend. The, the guy best friend. Um... I thought he was kind, but I thought Austin was super arrogant and Allie was super ditzy and I, I don't know, there was just too much that was just not great for the growing child mind, so I, I wasn't crazy about it. But And, uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't a big fan of it, but... And it was, was kind of annoying. That, they kind of whined constantly during it. I know it was on Disney and it's definitely a newer one. Yeah. No, it was a newer one. Maybe that's why they're not. Maybe why these aren't included because all of them are newer. Okay, well, I'm talking about that. Let's go to one that I cannot 100% believe is not on this list. Okay, what's that? It is older. Okay. It was made from 1993 to 2000. And it's not on the list. A boy meets world. Oh, I think about that. It was not on the list. Boy meets world is. Uh, adolescent with two mm, siblings mm -hmm. testing various theories 
about life and endures the trials of growing up alongside a good friend. Oh. 1993 to 2000. Wasn't on the list. I didn't put him on the list. I don't get it. Um, because Boy Meets World beats everything else out. I mean, I like, yes, I get our scale is only a 10 out of 10. They get a 12 out of 10. So, I mean, I, Boy Meets World was like my, my go-to show. I was obsessed with Sean. Like you that was my be. dream. Huh? I said you would be. He was my dream boat. Like. Gotta that, go with Corey Matthews. No, I liked his hair. I liked Sean's hair. Um, I liked Corey's attitude, but Sean's hair. If I could get a Corey with Sean's hair, then I'd be fine, which is what I got. So, I got yeah. a Corey with Sean's hair. Yeah. This is by far my uh, favorite show growing up, and I was really disappointed on this list that they didn't include it. That's really devastating, yeah. Mr. Feeney, he was fantastic. Yeah. Now, it was great that they always, that, that Mr. Feeney was the neighbor, and they always gave him a hard time. Now, I mean, this is definitely a show... For me, I think I probably I definitely watch it. Obviously, after it probably stopped airing. I would assume so. Yeah. Uh, okay. It was a teenage show. I was a teenager when I watched the show, and obviously it ended when I was ten. Mm -hmm. So I mean, but definitely a show I could relate to as a kid. Um, I'd watch it every time it came on. Yeah. So how this wasn't their number one show on IMDb is. I have crazy. no idea because the the honestly this is the show that had the biggest impact on me as a a kid, um well as a young adult because I still remember the episode where the Pega told Court because he had feelings for another girl. The Pega told Corey to go experiment and see what happened, but then he did, and he happened to I think kiss her. And she ended up breaking up with him over it. And he's like, but you told me. To. I mean, I remember that whole, like, I remember that episode. And that was like, I cried, they cried. It was a big deal. And it, it that that show was one of those shows that it was like, dang. Like, that like that could actually happen because it's like real people. Like, I don't know. It was, it, that was a yeah, good uh, show. They did a really good show. Really good job on this show. Um... That was a yeah. good show. I mean, they did do a spinoff of it, though. Of Girl Meets World, later on. Which we watched. They didn't do it for long, though. It only lasted, like, what, one season? It was cute, though. I enjoyed it. I was hoping they did more. They never did, though. It was, like, one, two seasons, but I don't remember how many. But I, I know I, I really liked it, because they... Yeah, they still had their original Corey in there and the original Topanga and And I mean I guess the one and only reason that this show might not have been listed was because it was a Disney Channel show, mm -hmm. but it was also on ABC. So it was not a Disney oh, Channel original. original. I did not know that. So that'd be the only reason I could think that it wasn't on it, but it is the only show I give a ten out of ten on. I would yeah. For sure. 10 out of 10. Yeah. Uh, as maybe. high as I can go. I'd give more if I could. I love that show. That's what we had on that one. Um, yeah. I mean. So as far as our list goes. Of what we ranked shows as. Was Boy Meets World. Number one, even Stevens, Lilo and Stitch, Fiddies and Ferb, The Proud Family, Recess, That's So Raven, Kim Possible, Jesse, Wizards of Waverly Place, Good Luck Charlie, Fillmore, Hannah Montana, The Emperor's New School, Lizzie McGuire, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody at 11, Brady and Mr. Whiskers, Lloyd in Space, American Dragon Drake Long, Phil of the Future, Liv and Maddie, Austin and Allie, Corey in the House, Madeline, The Famous J Jackson, Weekenders, House of Mouse, Natural Savvy, We've Never Seen, and Jonas and Life or Dark, We've Never Seen. So yeah. can't give it on. So, I mean, that's basically what so we who had scored, for this one. Who scored the, la the lowest? 
Um, uh, the lowest one we actually score is Malin. Um, mm. Was kind of a but you, obscured one. Kind of haven't seen it. So the lowest one we both scored would have been Corey in the house. Makes sense. I figured it'd be Corey in the house and then Sweet Life. Uh, Corey in the house and Austin Alley. Yeah. And then Liv and Maddie. Yeah, but I didn't expect Liv and uh, Maddie or Austin and Alley. I didn't expect. Uh, I feel the future was above that. And American Dragon Jake Long, but you didn't see it, so that so one had only before. half one. Yeah. Lloyd in Space was above that. Uh, okay. Nine. Brandy Mesker Whiskers at 10.5 and a Sweet Life at Zach Cody at 11. 11, okay. So. I really thought <laughs> I really thought Sweet Life was going to get the lowest based on that I was basing off of the fact that they had a... Well, we both gave it a 5.5, which gave it 11 total. Wow. I was going to rate it lower, I said, but I enjoyed their other episodes from their original, and I was like, I can't really completely trash them based on I didn't enjoy their spinoff, because this isn't what it's supposed to be based off of, but I did anyway, I still based it off their spinoff, which you, apparently you did too, so. Yeah, I and that, and that spinoff kind of killed that one, but <laughs> I mean. Could have been way better if they would have just stuck with the original plot. Uh, that's basically what we got. The reason we did this episode, though, or the reason I, I wanted to recommend this episode, was coming up here on March 1st, we have Mandalorian. Kind of Yay! Again. So, March 1st on Yoda. Disney Plus, Mandalorian will be back. It's not a sponsored ad, but hey, if Disney wants to reach out to us, uh, yeah. Woo -woo. let's go. I would definitely do another Disney episode. Look how cute. Aww. Not going to spoil anything for me and Laurie. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch the other seasons. But it comes Highly out. Highly recommend. It comes out March 1st on Disney Plus. So that's kind of why I figured this would be a good day to do a Disney episode, being said that they're about to release The Mandalorian. So. We have some ideas for some other episodes coming up, so which won't be football based, but will be entertaining. So. Yep. At least we're hoping so. <laughs> yeah, at least we hope so. Um, so yeah. We'll see, I guess. This will be entertaining for us because we'll still get to talk. Either way, we're gabbing, so might as well just record it, right? So. Very much. <laughs> uh, until next time. See you later. Bye. Bye.